Exactly. Hey everybody, good morning. Nikki Burnett here. This is Taste Life Radio, streaming live on KUHSDenver.com. Taste Life Radio, what do we do? We talk about truth, we talk about health, and we talk about dogs, and we want to have some fun and bring on some of the smartest people in the world. So, <laughs> uh, yes, see, they embarrassed me when I walked in, so now it's my turn. <laughs> so, oh, I need to turn the music down now. And so, what we want to talk about today is, is really sort of one of those super cool topics that people are like, wait, what? So, if you've heard of ketamine, okay, and if you know me at all by this point, uh, you know that I am one to do everything that's possible, to do everything through foods, through supplementation, through understanding labs and genetics, and as much of this stuff as I'm capable of understanding, sometimes we got to go outside of that. <laughs> you got to hit the edge of the box. Yeah, right, yeah. right, exactly. Um, and, and though, when we bring people on who are going to go outside of that box, it's always a holistic approach as much as possible, which is cool because it doesn't mean that that stuff isn't important. It just means sometimes we got to take bigger steps to, to, to have more success or better success or any success in, the, in maybe this case, yeah. right? So um, I should introduce Sarah. Miss Sarah Eisenbud, good friend of mine. She's been on before. She is a therapist and now, a, now and for quite some time now, a ketamine assisted psychotherapist. Yep. Yes. <laughs> so this is going to be an amazing conversation because we're going to talk a lot about drug resistant and uh, uh, depression, not antidepression, <laughs> drug, <laughs> drug resistant depression, PTSD, anxiety. Um, these these problems that we're seeing in our world that are overwhelming and creating this ma these mass amounts of suicide mm -hmm. and it's heartbreaking what we're seeing in in the mental health world. Um, but before we get started, as always, we got to talk about what we're grateful for. It's a great place to start. <laughs> <laughs> what are you grateful for? I think the answer is always the same. My dog Boone is where we Boone. start. <laughs> Yay, Boone! <laughs> Little Boonesy is healthy because Nikki made him healthy Yay. with a new nutrition well, plan. Well, just 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 food, real food. It's all it yeah. takes. Yeah, real not food. all it takes, but yeah. a lot of times. <laughs> does he eat better than me? People say he uh -huh. does sometimes. Yes, I but know, I know. It's the amazing yeah. thing. My husband will get in the refrigerator. It's like, is this our food or is this the dog's <laughs> food? It's our food, come on. Sometimes it's the dog's food. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we share. The other day I roasted up some acorn squash, and it yeah. was like some for me, some for Boone. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's my big yeah. start of gratitude. And then I think just being able to have a job that I like. I was um, the other day talking to somebody about um, student loans and how much of a bummer oh, they can man. be. Yeah. And I think we decided to come back to the framing of like this is the like tax you pay to have a job you love and it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean it's yeah. it's kind of part of it. Um but especially with the hours that you're working on. Yeah, I transitioned from my private practice to working at integrative psychiatry centers in Boulder, um, and I didn't really transition. I now am running a private practice and uh -huh. working four days a week up in Boulder at integrative psychiatry. Which is interesting, though, because this is a, a much-needed therapeutic is what we're seeing yeah yeah I mean mm -hmm. I think I was becoming so disparaged just being a mental health mm -hmm. provider out there I started I would always talk about oh I love taking in people with anxiety with PTSD because mm -hmm. I would see gains but people coming in with treatment resistant depression you just can't talk your way out of a hole yeah. like that something yeah. has mm -hmm. to happen at a physical level whether that's with mm -hmm running labs, getting appropriate medication, supplementation, physical exercise, or some of these bigger adjuncts like ketamine-assisted mm -hmm. psychotherapy or, you know, as it becomes FDA-approved, psilocybin-assisted Yeah, psychotherapy. that's an interesting one, too. Yeah. So we'll have that one on hopefully at some point because <laughs> I think it's it's super interesting. You know, they're, they're very much, you know, 
for me personally, early on anyway, you know, you see ketamine, it's a horse tranquil tranquilizer or it's somebody's recreational drug, right? <laughs> I mean, it, ketamine has like a bad rap. <laughs> I remember the first time a client brought this treatment to me, it was like maybe four years ago, they were like, mm -hmm. I've been really suffering and they had this pamphlet and mm -hmm. It was like, a doctor will give you ketamine for your depression. And I was like, I don't know. It looks really sketchy to me. That's and I like, told that client yeah. that I like, didn't know if this was a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she went ahead and did it anyway. Yeah. And then came back and was better. <laughs> and there you go. The world opens up. <laughs> yeah. It's a good, good reminder that I do not know what I'm talking about sometimes. Well, you know, sometimes, that, you know, that's what makes people that I love to be around in healthcare. Um, good healthcare providers is if you're a seeker. Yeah. So you have to seek truth, and you have to just because you don't know something doesn't mean it's right, and it also doesn't mean it's it's wrong. Sure. Um, either way, but uh, you know, being a seeker and not being closed off to new therapies, you know, uh, even you know, there are some providers who are closed off to food. Food doesn't make a difference in our health. That's a personal experience. <laughs> Um, and so as long as you're a, you're a seeker um, and really looking to gather data, gather information and yeah. understand, that, you know, all that we can that's out there, you know, sure. we have some limited capacity sometimes, but, you know, I think that that's what's really important. And so you're a seeker and here you are. Yeah. A ketamine assisted psychotherapist. Yeah. I've cool been stuff. doing this work now for about a year and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, real quick, I got to talk about what I'm grateful for, and I think what I'm the most grateful for today is, of course, you and the fact that you're here. And I've been waiting for this conversation for a long time. Yeah. Um, but we're coming up on Memorial Day, and so I am, yeah, I'm just really, really grateful for those who, you know, gave their lives to save our lives, and those who are still working really hard to keep us safe and. Um, I'm so grateful to our military, and so thank you for all that you do, those of you who are out there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we will celebrate you this weekend by going camping. <laughs> 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 and thinking about it, we'll have our flag out there, but yeah. um, I, that's another thing. I'm just ready to get out, get out in the world and soak up yeah. the sun and do some camping and, you know, yeah. All the good things. I mean, I think it is going to mm -hmm. rain all weekend, but we can be grateful for all that moisture. <gasps> Stop it. <laughs> yeah, I, I looked at the weather a couple, uh, just last week, and it was all clear. So yeah. we're going down to South Fork, Colorado area. Oh, I love mm -hmm. it. And then I looked yesterday and I'm like, wait, where did this rain come from? <laughs> and then it's going to rain here, but at least my plants will be okay. <laughs> yeah, for four days. Yeah, I'm grateful you have beautiful sunshine, or you get moisture that the earth really needs. It's That's true. Win -win. It's true. It is a win-win. <laughs> it's a little more of a win with sun. I just love the sun. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. So um, we did this before, but for anybody maybe who's new, I think that it's a good place to start. Just you know, talking about your history, where you're from, what, what brought you here, sure. you know, what motivates you every day, um, oh. that kind of thing. So three hours later, we're done with that <laughs> conversation. <laughs> I know. But, um, well, um, I don't even know where to start. I guess um, I begin with just where I am now, um, which is I run a private practice called Denver Narrative Therapy Project, where I practice in the narrative tradition, which is just a kind of alternative, fun, exciting way to do psychotherapy that's non-pathologizing. Um, and Big words. I love your big words. <laughs> <laughs> non-pathologizing. Non -pathologizing. That's amazing. Well, just stepping away the same mm -hmm. way that, Nikki, you step away from mm -hmm. allopathic medicine yeah. in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. We've got this disease model that says what's wrong with people um, versus what's right with people and how do we help mm -hmm. them thrive. And I think narrative therapy does that. Um, but it does it through just conversations. So there's real limits on what we can think our way yeah. out of and what we yeah. can talk our way out mm -hmm. of. The words we use are really important. Um, and the, they, Like the words we use, the words we tell ourselves, yeah. right? Because the way that I, when I talk to people about you, um, because I try to refer to Sarah <laughs> as often as I can, because I think everybody needs it. Everybody needs to talk and needs, sure. the, needs the guidance. But you help people with their story, and yeah. you kind of help them to switch that story from the negative to a positive in yeah. a sense, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because when we, 
I love neuroscience. This is an area that we, I love it. And what we see is when we speak certain words and have certain thoughts, the same way when we put a drug in our body or when we eat a certain food, it's going to alter our brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. So there is that base, and that was the place from which I've been working for the last, I don't know, six years or so. Mm -hmm. Um, before that, I have a background in always helping people in weird ways. Um, a background <laughs> in like, I was a social worker. I worked with people with developmental disabilities. Mm. I bounced around in chaos trying to find my path. As many of us do. <laughs> but, but this year, yeah, so I, even though I had a full-time job and a thriving private practice, I was full um, and mm -hmm. no longer accepting new clients. Um, a, a couple people that I really admire run a podcast and an institute and a clinic, um, Keith Curlander and um, Will Vanderveer. And I was on their mailing list and they sent out this mailing that said, we're looking for a ketamine assisted psychotherapist. And I applied for a job even though I already <laughs> had a job. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think I want to uh -huh. do that because uh -huh. I'd seen a number of my clients really respond well to the ketamine. I'd been getting excited, reading about, I think, most people, what they know about psychedelic assisted therapy, they learn from Michael Pollan's book, How to Change Your Mind. Uh, um, but yeah. I had read it, and like everyone who read it, I got really excited yeah. um, and had been doing more reading. So that's when I transitioned to, um, yeah, IPC, Integrative Psychiatry Centers of Boulder, where I work now. And um, yeah, and it's been wonderful being on a team and working collaboratively. I think a big thing to know about us is that we work um, we don't just have ketamine and give it to people. And there are, there are a lot of places like bouncing up that just do ketamine infusions. Just you stop in, you sit in a room sometimes with other people and they give you ketamine. Oh, um, that doesn't sound fun. Yeah, we practice integrative psychiatry. Mm -hmm. So beginning with things like running labs, mm -hmm. like doing genetic yeah. testing, yeah. like looking at nutrition, looking at mm -hmm. physical health, looking at all of the pieces of the puzzle and one tool in that toolbox mm -hmm. that we use is ketamine assisted yeah. psychotherapy yeah um, and then we continue to come back to some of those other mm -hmm. things that base level of resourcing and health this is why um you know so often when i bring people on who who are whether they're referral partners or um just people who i know and love and trust in the healthcare world it's because we are very much like-minded in that we have to have multiple tools. And I am not just, you know, just because I do nutrition doesn't mean I don't help to look at mindset and, you know, environment and relationships and that kind of thing. It's not my, you know, I'm not the best at it, which is why I have people to refer to, you know. <laughs> I mean, I can't do therapy. <laughs> but um, I do talk to people about those things. And when I, when I bring people in, to you know my clients who need a team because clients often do need yeah. a team of practitioners it's those people who who view it yes foods important supplements likely important medication likely important or can sure. be important maybe it's not right um, as well yeah. as it could be physical therapy it could be you know it's all it depends on what the situation is but having that holistic approach in looking at as many factors as possible um, is, I, in, in my mind, the best way to help people optimize, oh. get well, get better, sure. you know, whatever, whatever the issue is. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, depression, which is what we work with particularly and with ketamine, also PTSD and mm -hmm. a few other concerns is, <coughs> I like to conceptualize it as a problem of not having enough resources. Mm -hmm. And so some of that might be, you know, the very traditional, again, medical model way of looking at it is you don't have enough serotonin running around in your brain. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. a lack of neurotransmitter resources. Mm -hmm. But it's also important to look at, do we have enough social resources? Do we have, are we getting enough micronutrients in your diet resources? Mm -hmm. Are we giving you enough physical movement? That's another resource. And so making sure that a person has all of the resources they need to have a brain that functions properly and mm -hmm. allows them to experience joy, connection, regulation. Yeah. And with that being said, too, I can't help but to say, you know, with, with that allopathic look of not having enough ser serotonin running, in the br running around in the brain, you always have to ask why. And that's, yeah, yeah and that's kind of where we are and where, the, where there's, a, there's a problem with just going after the symptom, yeah. Because there's if there's not enough serotonin for some reason, why is it? Well, there are not enough amino acids in the diet or the micronutrients, mm -hmm. right? Because these are the things that help the body to create serotonin. 
and there are many, many other factors, but always, whatever, if you're dealing with something like this or any physical, mental, and emotional situation, um, ask why. Always ask why. And if you yeah. don't know the answers, because a lot of us don't, you gotta you got to seek out. But don't sure. just say, yes, it's a lack of uh, an SSRI. You know, sure. usually it's not just a lack of an SSRI. <laughs> well, I mean, and I think what we're seeing is depression even. This is such a broad term. Like, there wasn't even a term right. depression until... I don't know, like, I think it was like the 1940s is when that that started being used as Mm -hmm. a term clinically a little bit. Don't quote me on that, but it's roughly around that Mm -hmm. time. Before that, there was melancholia. There's all these different... (laughs) Melancholia. That's a fun one. (laughs) Yeah. There's just a... And together, like, we as a psychiatric community took all these symptoms that troubled people and gave them this label, depression. And so in narrative therapy, I would deconstruct that. If someone comes Mm -hmm. in and says, I have depression, I'd be like, okay, what does that mean? Yeah, (laughs) right. What flavor of depression do Mm -hmm. you have? How are you really being affected by it? (coughs) Um, We do see that there are some things in common, some common factors and some common needs. Mm -hmm. Um, And ketamine seems to address a number of those. It is right now. I don't know if it's the right time to... But you know, what we see is that with people with treatment-resistant depression, depending on the studies you're reading, it's 70 to 85% um, has some effectiveness for That's people, amazing. which is you know, talk therapy for a person with that level of depression is gonna be under 20%. Well, um, and I, it, it, if I were to sort of put this in my own perspective, yeah. even somebody with this type of depression, it would be even difficult to get them to an appointment to do talk therapy, is that? It, it can Safe. be, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And it's, there's all these things that we know are super effective for depression. Mm-hmm. You know, we see study after study again shows that exercising, getting your heart rate up for 20 plus minutes three mm-hmm. times a week is as or more effective than any SSRI that's on the market. That's amazing. We know mm-hmm. that. Yeah. However, you look at a person who has treatment resistant depression, you say, yeah, I just need you to get up and go for a run. Yeah, just like, yeah. take a little trip to the elliptical. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, <laughs> good luck, lady. It's like, I can't out get out of bed right yeah. now. And so looking for some of these treatments that we can, um, we refer to the ketamine therapy often as a catalyst, Mm -hmm. something Mm -hmm. that's gonna buy somebody enough traction that they can then begin employing all these other tools, resources, and skills that we know Mm -hmm. are effective. They're like, oh, you just need more social connection. (laughs) Yeah, because that's what I wanna do right now, is be social. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Okay, yeah, no, that's, that's super interesting. And so when it comes to I think I think one of the questions that I have as far as ketamine's concerned, how did we get to this point? How do we start to realize sure. the benefits of it in in how long has it been? I mean, because it's pretty incredible going from a horse tranquilizer, quote unquote. It's got other data too, <laughs> but I have to. But well, that's what you know. What pe- most people know it as, right? People think yeah. about it as being from veterinary, and yeah. it was used that way. It's been used as an anesthetic on human beings for a long time. Okay. Um, And so we've seen that um, the story of the beginning of ketamine psychotherapy, Mm -hmm. uh, ketamine, unlike almost every other treatment for depression that tries to act in some way on the serotonin loops in the brain, it acts in a different way on what we call NMDA receptors. Mm -hmm. Um, And without needing to know too much about that, it's a really different process, but there had been some ideas that this could be effective for depression. Um, because they started seeing people who were taking ketamine <laughs> for something else. Like recreational use? Um, or just no, not recreational. Okay. It's used a lot as a very safe anesthesia. It's on most um, um, ambulances. It's used huh. for children okay. who need to be sedated quickly, but who you don't want to give something else that's not as safe, safe to. Yeah, Isn't yeah. That interesting that um, it's so safe. I love yeah, that. yeah, but they were using it actually in these studies to replicate the sense of schizophrenia, which is, we now know, is not what ketamine does. Like, the psychedelic and dissociative effects that come from ketamine are nothing like schizophrenia. But there was this research study in the 90s that was using it in that way. Uh And what they saw was that it didn't do what they thought it was going to do, but they did see that people's depression was going down (laughs) significantly after taking Uh it. And so then there began to be more research done. At this point, there's been a significant amount of research done um, showing that ketamine decreases symptoms of depression and especially decreases acute suicidality. Like 
Wow. Fairly instantly. It's just, it, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy cool. Yeah. So one of the things that I want to hit on, which, which, so I, you should know, and I know you know, I know virtually nothing about therapy and about <laughs> mental and emotional health. That's not true. But <laughs> I <do. laughs> so th from this is, and I think this maybe comes from conversations with you. And so what, so what I know is there is a, a mental situation that is a disassociative mental illness, right? And then you have ketamine, which is a disassociative. So can you explain the two to me? Or the different, I mean, I know the difference. Oh, I think, sure. But what is yeah. dissociation is sort of the question that you're asking. Yeah. So dissociation is a spectrum of, to, like, basically to what degree is my conscious attention, like, aligned with my experience mm -hmm. of my body? Like, how embodied am I right now? Um, and how separate from my own experience do I feel? So we all experience dissociation. Okay. Um, a great example of that is have you ever gotten in the car and you just sort of end up, like, zoning out and you arrive mm -hmm. where you were mm -hmm. going but you don't remember the driving there that is a very low level dissociation you're like whoa I like wasn't really connected to what was happening but my systems kicked in and they drove me home Isn't that crazy yeah and so that can go all the way from over there very mm -hmm. normal experiences of kind of being out of it and disconnected <laughs> all the way to people who have PTSD or psychosis who describe floating above their bodies, who oh, begin to wow. really just check out from their emotional experience. And it's a safety mechanism. Mm -hmm. Dissociation is good. Our brains do it for good reasons. It just can get stuck in and become a problem okay. um, when somebody's not able to stay present with what's going on. Okay. Um, when we take psychedelic medications, they can induce a dissociative effect, mm -hmm. um, which kind of just gives us, I like to think of it more as a meditative stance. Okay. In meditation, mm -hmm. we connect to our observer self so that instead of being a slave to the thoughts that we're having and being trapped in the tyranny of the moment, we can kind of look in and be like, huh, well, that's crippling self-doubt. Interesting. Like, <laughs> like, okay. oh, I'm just yeah. like running through grocery lists in my head when I'd rather be focusing on something else. And you can mm -hmm. notice and watch what's happening, but with a sense of a little bit of detachment. And okay. so that's one of the therapeutic effects that ketamine provides people, is it gives them a chance to have a little bit of space from their feelings of distress, mm -hmm. um, but where you can actually investigate them. And so we see that a lot um, working with people with PTSD on ketamine. Mm -hmm. We capitalize on that dissociative effect. People are able to go and explore traumatic memories, thoughts, and emotions, and they can think about them and talk about them and look at them, but not have the feeling that it's happening to them in the wow. moment, not be experiencing mm -hmm. the same level of distress. Mm -hmm. um, and people describe that a lot in the therapy I do with them. And so. Is this only during therapy while they actually have the ketamine in them, or does this, will that linger where they are they able to do that after the, that therapy is over? So there's two different, that's like a complicated and wonderful question. Okay. <laughs> there's basically two processes that occur when we're giving people ketamine. One is the dissociative psychedelic effect that's happening in the moment, which is giving people a chance to do deeper therapeutic work. It also is what we think decreases suicidality so mm -hmm. quickly, is that sense of like, I'm not suffering, or yeah. I'm suffering differently. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Taking ketamine is not always pleasant, to be clear. Okay. Sometimes yeah. it is, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's not. Sure. Um, and then on the other hand, we have this kind of um, effect on the neurotransmitters, the NMDA receptors, and it shuts down the default mode network which is our brain kind of running in circles, thinking mm -hmm. the same thoughts. We all have a default mode network, but mm -hmm. in people with depression or PTSD, it can get very entrenched. Yeah. So the ketamine is shutting that down and giving a hard reset that can later provide more flexibility. Like it's basically doing the brain work over here. Mm -hmm. And then you also have created a window where you're doing the therapy work over mm -hmm. here. <coughs> people sometimes even have over here mystical experiences or experiences of oneness, spiritual experiences, mm -hmm. a sense that things will be okay, and they can carry that into their life the same way that any okay, experience sure. we have that's mm -hmm. meaningful gets carried in. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, you've got just the physical flexibility that's being created by the ketamine that would be no matter mm -hmm. what experience mm -hmm. you have. Interesting. So one of the things that, that, that caught me, and so I, and I say this because, you know, with all of the COVID stuff that was going on, there were people who 
who I who I know who had this major anxiety and this 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 constant um, it's just this constant running of fear about what's going to happen, what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen, but what's going to happen, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, and it would it would kind of paralyze wow. people. I would see this, and, and it's it's hard for me to grasp, um, just because I mean I'm sure that. I, maybe it's happened to me before. I don't know, but you're, you're just pretty regulated. Like you I'm, don't have anxiety or depression at the clinical level, and it's, it's okay. It's true. <laughs> Thank goodness. It's okay that you don't understand that. <laughs> um, but that's when I saw that it's that ruminating, and mm -hmm. like, this is like well, I was looking sure. at their website and trying to you know do my own research because I told her yesterday when we were talking, I was like, I need to be able to ask questions that make me sound good because I don't know anything about this. <laughs> Sure. Um, but I think it's amazing stuff. But it's that it's that process where you're just ruminating and you're running, and, and that has happened to me where things just go and go and sure. go, and it, that in and of itself can make somebody, yeah, mad, yeah. right? It makes me mad. I'm like, why is this just sitting there? What's what's doing that? And so, and to have that just, co just constantly be there, I can sure. that I can I can. I guess kind of feel right, and, yeah. And get, because you, nobody wants that, and for it to never go away, I just can't even imagine. And to have a break from that, yeah, is huge. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that's what's so wonderful is that you have an opportunity to really somebody who can't. I can get a break from that by sitting and meditating for two hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, somebody who doesn't have the same resources that I yeah. have right now, who doesn't have a history of meditation practice, mm -hmm. who may not have two hours in their life to sit down. Um, yeah, they're not going to be able to access that. Yeah. Do you really meditate for two hours? Yeah. Not every day. Every day I meditate for like 20 minutes and okay. then I sit for a couple hours once a week. That's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got out of my meditative practice. I've got to get back in. Um, and we begin again. That's mm -hmm. roomy. We mm -hmm. just come back. Like that's part begin of the again. process mm -hmm. too is watching ourselves fall off and come back. But yeah. Um, yeah. But interrupting that default mode mm -hmm. never. It's really potent, and it will come back online if people don't continue to do other treatments, yeah. move things mm -hmm. forward. Because we've talked about all these benefits of ketamine, and we can go more into that. But I want, like, I already want to give a disclaimer, mm -hmm. which is these effects are not enduring if people don't take further action. If it's not part of an integrated plan. Yeah. Um, people come and they do ketamine treatment and they feel much better and then it fades because mm -hmm. the default mode network is strong. Potent. Yeah, I mean it's there yeah. for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real quick. Um, it's already ten thirty. I got to take a break. <laughs> um, <laughs> so let's talk real quick about Rightful. I love Rightful. Uh, they are a pain management company or it's a pain management supplement. So the basis of it is curcumin or the active component of turmeric. Um, and they have two uh, two supplements that go together, a morning and an evening. So the evening, you know, it's got some, you know, calming herbs, and uh, it kind of helps you, you know, relax and go to sleep, and you know, mm -hmm. a little CBD, and it's 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 a really nice product. People sleep really well on it, and then they have mm -hmm. an, a morning where it kind of gets you focused and um, helps you go through the day. But the, the 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 point of it is to help with your chronic pain. Um, and it's being, it is sold in uh, pain management clinics, which is one of the reasons why I love it, because we're seeing, you know, that we, they're, they're allopathic and functional medicine and, and, you know, or holistic or whatever it is you want to call it, <laughs> supplements, you know, they, they are coming together and there is a place for them, especially when they're yeah. this good. Um, and so always know, though, the reason for your pain right so it's still going to cover up pain which is good but you want to know what the reason is and um address it so find the root cause um but this is a it's a really great product so uh you can go to rightful.com put in the code tln20 get the discount give it a try good stuff it's one of my favorites awesome yeah cool so yeah let's move into um Let's see, what did we hit? So <laughs> I think jumping around a lot. Probably. No, it's fine. I think it's good. Um, you know, one of the things that I have here, it, oh, I, th I think I wanted to say this just on to, to kind of piggyback on what we had just said was, you know, the title of, you know, the show is Silver Bullet or a, a Tool, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, just as you were saying, I think to kind of hit it, maybe close out that section, we'll probably come back to it, but is that it's not a silver bullet, but it is pretty flipping amazing. 
It is amazing, and it's an amazing mm -hmm. tool as part of a, I, I feel like I sound like a broken record, but people don't hear this. We see them coming into the clinic all the time, and they read about somebody on the internet who did ketamine therapy and just saw all their depression go away, and they come in with expectations that that's what's going to happen as opposed to expectations of, we've got an extra tool to throw at you, and with a lot of work <laughs> and a lot of collaboration, <laughs> yeah. it could be more effective than the tools that you've been using. Um, so I think it's really important because mm -hmm. people's expectations that this will fix them, mm -hmm. cure them, heal them are really counterproductive to the therapeutic process. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good point. I want to dig in only just a little bit because this is not something that I'm good at and it, it takes probably a team of people to really talk about the neuroscience of this stuff. Sure. But the things that I found interesting when I was when I was reading about it is we know we know that drugs have their place mm -hmm. we also know that they can they they can be they can do some pretty good damage right oh they, sure they, they but what we're seeing and I'm not saying that ketamine is perfect but what we're seeing for one is it increases brain derived neurotrophic factor which is a hormone that promotes the reversal and um, have to read it because I can't. <laughs> uh, promotes the reversal of the loss of connectivity between neurons caused by chronic depression. That's, I mean, and there are other points here, but I want to mm -hmm. talk about that because I find that to be crazy cool. Yeah. And and how and why does that work? Because it's a synthetic, and you know, you think of synthetics. What's it, what's it doing that's bad? And like, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think one of the reasons that we love ketamine is that its side effect profile is very low, and m almost all of the side effects are things that happen while you're on it, not something that is enduring. Mm -hmm. So, like, feeling a little nauseous is a side effect, Kay. but that doesn't affect mm -hmm. going forward. In your After two hours of doing IV ketamine, those side effects are done. Yeah. The dissociative effect is a side effect. Like mm -hmm. a lot of those side effects are there, but long term and in the days that follow, we don't see a side effect profile anywhere close to what we see with SSRIs. Um, I mean, that's that's huge. It is. I think SSRIs can can be a problem. SSRIs can be a problem and a life saving solution. Okay. That's the challenge with mm -hmm. SSRIs mm -hmm. and with medication in general. That's why, I, without being in too much of a love fest with my clinic, I love working with these integrative psychiatrists who look at alternatives. Um, mm -hmm. We do intentionally and under the management of physicians work with people to get off medication um, if that's their goal coming mm -hmm. in. And ketamine can be a part of that for the reason you're talking about. Mm -hmm. When you have this moment that creates more flexibility, and there's there's great little pictures that show how it like starts to create little like nodules on um, neurons so that they can connect to others. It's I won't get the right word, but it's like the synaptic space between uh -huh, neurons uh -huh. is get kind of growing out to uh -huh. connect. Like you see little neurons with like little teeny roots, and then Baby after the neurons. ketamine, they like get bigger roots Whoa. and are sort of heading out. Um, and that's fantastic. <laughs> that's amazing. And so when that happens, gosh, such a broken record. When supported by mm -hmm. other adjuncts, mm -hmm. I think you have to. That's something <laughs> that you have to say. Yeah. Um, people can begin to create new pathways. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the cool thing too. And I hope I'm not being repetitive, but I just find this fascinating. But you know, when we have trauma, when we have PTSD, you know, maybe I would just, I would probably say assume that a lot of people with severe depression have probably had some sort of trauma. Um, would that be sometime? I mean, they can, but I not mean, always. Um, not always. Mm -hmm. That's what depression is interesting because sometimes it really comes down to like this is a hereditary condition. This is something that a person sort of had, yeah. and it just mm -hmm. comes in it's highly heritable. Okay, um, you know, we see mm -hmm. that, and then you see people with PTSD where depression is a big part of that, mm -hmm. or where mood disturbance is a big yeah. part of that. Um, so yeah, a lot of people we work with with depression do have some kind of trauma just because so many people in our culture do. Yeah. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. one in four girls, one in six boys will experience some kind of sexual abuse as a child. That's disgusting. It is. <laughs> and wow. so, yeah, we're seeing that, like, mm -hmm. of course there's overlap, mm -hmm. but it does yeah. seem to work differently. And some people just come in with depression. It's a disease the same mm -hmm. way that... Mm -hmm 
having certain kinds of heart conditions yeah. or other things are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it less treatable. Yeah. But up until now, it sometimes felt like it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that was kind of my, my point to that was what, you know, we know that experiences create pathways. Yeah. Sure. Um, and so to have the ability to, to, to find something that can create other pathways so you can divert in, Absolutely. in a sense, right? Yeah, I, I often talk to patients about it as though like our default mode network or in narrative therapy speak, we'd say our problem saturated stories, just that tape that runs that it's sort of boring. You know, that tape that runs that goes all the way from mm -hmm. like, oh, I need to go to the store. Oh, I'm so tired. Work is boring. Also runs to like, oh, I'm like such a crummy person. No one loves me. No one's ever going to love me. Like the world is ending. Like I should probably just kill myself. Oh, like I need to go to the grocery store. I should just kill myself. Like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, mm -hmm. it just gets really repetitive. And so when we use the ketamine, it's like a combination of short circuiting it. When we see PET scans, we see that this area of the brain, and it's multiple areas, but this mm -hmm. default mode network um, just gets much quieter. Mm. Like you see a picture where normally these areas are really lit up and mm -hmm. on the ketamine it gets much quieter. At the same time, we're flooding the brain with these good chemicals, this glutamate. Again, don't quite understand how all of it works, mm -hmm. but we have the moment to take somebody out of this rut like there's then this window of opportunity to say, this story isn't working, let's slide out of the rut and see what's going on over here. Let's like move over adjacent and start cultivating a more mm -hmm. engaging story, a mm -hmm. more interesting mm -hmm. story. Um, and people do that. Let's start building new habits. Let's yeah. start um, connecting the dots about how actually maybe you're like not that crummy. Like maybe yeah. you're kind of awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me those stories. I love that. And that's where the mm -hmm. psychotherapy comes in. Yeah. We see that ketamine is much more effective when paired with psychotherapy, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. although not everybody is using it that way right now. Yeah. 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 That's too bad. And hopefully, hopefully that will change. So the glutamate, um, I found that interesting because w here's what I know about glutamate. And this goes, just goes back to, you know, nutrition where, you know, we, we look at things like MSG, mm -hmm. so monosodium glutamate. People have a big problem with this because it affects their, it, it's excitatory. It affects their brain, you yeah. right? And so it's it's an understanding why it's such a problem that we put it in foods. It's a, a flavor enhancer. It's not a preservative. It's a flavor enhancer. i got to remember all of these chemicals. Like, I don't know what MSG is yeah. except tasty. Yeah. <laughs> don't need it. <laughs> anyway, so when I'm talking to people who have, um, who tend to get in those, in my world, in those sort of excitatory states, you know, I, you know, we talk about things like MSG can do that because MSG, get my pathways correct, you know, it, it, monosodium glutamate goes to glutamine. Glutamine is supposed to, it converts, I think, back to glutamate, then it's supposed to convert down to GABA. So glutamate is... Uh, excitatory mm -hmm. and so if you're missing these enzymes that allow for the pathway to convert to GABA which is calming then you stay in this crazy yeah. excitatory state right yeah. so glutamine to glutamate to GABA um, and so it was interesting to see because I wonder I mean I can only assume that there are some of these people who have these sensitivities and they just don't this pathway is not functioning properly sure and so they stay in this place that is not a good place to be yeah yeah I mean I think we see that the, the ketamine is both excitatory and inhibitory so you see okay. those like parallel processes okay. happening huh. um, which is really interesting and you do see people having different experiences so some people while on the ketamine um, experience like just deep relaxation like I've gone into and others feel like their minds are very active and they're moving around mm -hmm. a lot um, Interesting. some people not long term but right following treatment have some disturbed sleep so some things can be a little bit amped up okay. mm -hmm. um, but we see that return to normal after mm -hmm. we're finished with the protocol typically um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's very interesting to watch people react really differently. And my understanding from listening, reading, and seeing is that there's not a full understanding, like with many psychiatric mm -hmm. medications and tools, of why when in the ketamine, the flooding of glutamate is so supportive and successful, mm -hmm. whereas when they've tried to do some of the work with these NMDA receptors with other synthetic compounds, they're not seeing the same mm -hmm. results. Um, 
So yeah, that would be a question for like a much higher level neuroscientist <laughs> than me. <laughs> it's just so interesting. I just think it's just really cool. And one of the things that just popped up to me here was ketamine reduces depression within six hours um, with effects that are equal to or greater than the effects of six weeks of treatment with other antidepressant medications. Yeah. Six it, hours. I mean, <laughs> well, wow. And that's referring to s in people who are coming in with acute suicidal ideation. Okay. okay. Um, and so that mm -hmm. is like one of the places where the ketamine does become more of a silver bullet. Okay. Which is, yes. we don't, in that moment when somebody, like today I am going to kill myself, I don't have any other thoughts or way out. Mm -hmm. Giving, there's research protocols that show, and then I've seen in my own work at the clinic that giving high dose and high in the range of doses that we give, which are significantly lower mm -hmm. than the doses used for pain management, used for you know, many mm -hmm. of the other uses of ketamine, the mm -hmm. anesthetic uses are so much higher, sure. like 10 times mm -hmm. more is used there. But in for our purposes, giving this high dose IV ketamine can really take somebody from that space and take them down to a point where they are no longer experiencing active suicidality. Again, is that gonna last? No, not mm -hmm. if not followed up with yeah. other treatments. Yeah. But as a like crisis intervention tool, mm -hmm. it's really potent. How often do you see that? Um, well, because of the nature of our clinic, we see it less because we don't have necessarily the scheduling to get somebody in. Like, like we don't have an. Uh, although I'd like to maybe, mm -hmm. and we've talked about like having an emergency slot yeah. open every yeah. day for somebody who's mm -hmm. going to come in that way. So, but I've worked with um, a few a few cases where it was like instead of going to the hospital and being um, being you know taken in inpatient a person's family member has brought them and we tried this first mm. um, and it has been effective wow to the point where then we're negotiating safety with the family and keeping mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. um, involved there but it's if I'm gonna go inpatient psychiatric what are they gonna do for me they're gonna give me some kind of sedating drugs right. and keep me locked in a room. And yeah. that's the only way to really keep somebody safe in those moments. And so the idea that we can actually interrupt the process uh -huh. a little bit and get somebody some relief from the mental anguish mm -hmm. just quickly, short term, is, it's incredible. And yeah, it is, I believe, probably the most effective, I think it would be fair to say, the most effective intervention for acute suicidality that we currently have access to. Wow. That's so interesting. So if somebody were to go, say this family member takes uh, someone to the emergency department because they're suicidal, would they, would they then just be sent, I mean, they'd have to see a shrink and, a shrink, I'm sorry, I should not have said that. Say shrink, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> they have to, I've had a couple of clients who are always like, hey shrink, hey, I'm shrink. like, first off, I'm not a psychiatrist, yeah. but second off, yeah, so that's fine. I just think it's hilarious. Where does it even come from? <laughs> a, head a head shrinker. A oh, shrinker is what gosh. they used to call them. That's awful. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I guess I'm more curious, is this something that, that would be given in an emergency department situation? Or do they know? To not, do not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not yet. Mm -hmm. So ketamine has been FDA approved, however, not for these uses. Mm -hmm. Treating for depression and PTSD are considered off-label uses. I mean, they are legal and regularly sure. practiced, but mm -hmm. we haven't yet gotten to where any inpatient psychiatric centers that I know of, mm -hmm. there might be some. Things are really changing and growing day to day mm -hmm. where that's a tool that they have, but I think it would be a wonderful tool for them to have. Because yeah. as it is now, most people have a traumatic experience going inpatient mm -hmm. when they have to be put on a hold because they're a mm -hmm. danger to themselves. Mm -hmm. um, they end up just being out a lot of money, like nothing happens except really that we've bought them some time yeah. for their brains to get back to a better place, mm -hmm. which often they do. Do they? Okay. Um, you know, just in general, like suicide is a, there's a great little saying, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. you know, when you can give somebody, or even other psychiatric medications, antipsychotics, SSRIs, like they are effective mm -hmm. um, or can be. Yeah. But there's some people who just don't respond to them. Mm -hmm. um, when we use the term treatment-resistant depression, we mean people who have not seen results from at least two SSRIs. Okay. That's a lot of people, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. Is like you would think it's like treatment-resistant, but... I didn't realize that. That's. I mean, I hear that, I, I say all the time, enough. I hear enough where people say, well, I've tried this and I've tried this and it's not working. And Sure. 
Well, and that's, I mean, that is the problem, is once somebody's failed two interventions, the likelihood that they will succeed with others is just plummets. The statistics are really interesting mm. on that. However, we do, this is not ketamine, but at our clinic and a lot of clinics these days, they do are able to do really good genetic testing that shows what people will be able to absorb. Mm -hmm. And so we're better able to find medications that are appropriate for the individual and their own biochemistry. Yeah, and that's really the, the, the most amazing thing about where medicine is going yeah. is this, this you know, genetic, epigenetic, nutrigenomic you know, place where we yeah. can, you know, look at our genes. I do this in a very small level, but we can look at at our, essentially our epigenetics, sure. right, and understand where the problem is, where the pathway, just like when we're talking about that glutamine to glutamate pathway, I'm sorry, yeah, glutamine, glutamate to GABA, if those pathways aren't functioning properly due to specific enzymes that are catalysts to create that pathway to work properly, yeah. you know, we can see that, which is, you're like, whoa, this is the coolest thing. We can see people, I mean, this is individualized nutrition, this is individualized medicine, and I just think we're not there, it, we can't get there fast enough. And, and <laughs> it's, it's so wonderful that, like, we, the psychiatrists at my mm -hmm. clinic, they do this, and it's really wonderful, and it's helpful. It is, mm -hmm. it's hard, because it's not widely available, it's mm -hmm. not, unless you've already met your deductible, it's not insurance yeah. billable, mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, so it's really only accessible to people who have both of the resources in their community, the financial resources, and maybe the yeah. social resources mm -hmm. to have found out that these treatments are there. It's amazing. I have to take another quick break. Henry takes care of me. He's like, okay, Nikki, time to take your break. <laughs> it's good. I used to send him a whole printout like this. I said, okay, this is what we're going to do, Henry. I don't even do it anymore. He just is like, oh, here we, here we go. <laughs> he takes care of me. Um, <laughs> so Zymogen, who I love, uh, Zymogen is a great supp supplement company who um, I'm going to say this over and over again. Do not purchase your supplements on Amazon or eBay. You've got to be very careful about where you get your supplements because of the quality, because of the lack of it being what it says it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Zymogen is there to support uh, their, their clients who are the practitioners and as well as the practitioners, patients, and clients. Um, and they're backed by data. They are amazing at what they do. Um, if their product is not absolutely perfect, they will not put it out in the market. Um, it's a, they, I just really appreciate them for, for who they are and for what they do. So uh, they're not the only company that I use, but I do use them a lot because of the quality of their supplements. Um, so Zymogen, you can go to my website, uh, tastelifenutrition.com. You can go down to the bottom. It says Whole Scripts. That's where you would order. You can click on that and you can check out all of those supplements and see if there's anything that you might want to try. But I will tell you, understand what it is that you need. You know, you don't want to waste money on supplements you don't need and you don't want to create more problems because the supplement is not what you need. So, you know, find out, you know, they do have some good basic multis, which is always fine, but make sure you're speaking to people or you know for yourself what it is that you need that's going to be best suited for you. Um, and then put in the code radio five and you'll get a discount. <laughs> okay, so man, time always flies. I say this every time, but it does. Um, so what else, what else do you think that we need to know? I have a few, you know, notes here, but so much of it we've already covered. You know, I have things like, you know, food, exercise, you know, supplements, you know, what are, th I guess specifically, because Joe, do y'all have a nutritionist on staff? We or don't have a nutritionist mm -hmm. on staff, but our um, psychiatrist is trained in nutrition nice. and then we'll refer out for more, if more nutrition support yeah. is necessary. A lot of the dietary recommendations that we're making are going to be really similar to ones I know that mm -hmm. you're making with people, mm -hmm. going with elimination diets, like trying things out, getting yeah. away from getting towards mm -hmm. the brain healthy foods, getting blood sugar regulated, mm -hmm. you know, um, getting off gluten, things yeah. like this. Awesome. Um, but yeah, we probably need to, I'd love to see us have an in-house nutritionist yeah. at some point. Yeah. yeah, I think that would be cool. You know, it's it's just that, that you know, that addition. I mean, if, if she's trained it, she? You're the person she, she is yeah, we have yeah. yeah, they're they're both she. Okay, okay. We we just only trust women doctors. No, we're <laughs> our, both our founders are men. <laughs> <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> 
Well, the training is what's important because a lot of people just yeah. don't have the training. They go by FDA yeah. guidelines, no. which are you know, <laughs> the food guidelines, which are terrible, terrible. Um, but, you know, but you know, that's the important part is having some training and understanding mm -hmm. that so much of what we deal with, not just physical but mental and emotional, comes from the gut. You know, and and, yes. and looking at the food that you're taking in, and are there food sensitivities, and is there an imbalance of the microbiome and some dysbiosis, and all of yep. these things can create inflammation and create. Yeah, mental and emotional and physical dis-ease, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, getting people on an anti-inflammatory diet is mm -hmm. often an important part of the yeah. process. Um, I think there are different anti-inflammatory kinds of diets that we're using, but... Awesome. Yeah. No, I love that. So, so that's there, yeah, and supplements are super mm -hmm. important. Um, again, we're trying to make changes in the brain, so you want to make sure it's completely supported at the other yeah. end. Yeah. So it's like we can interrupt and we can create this moment it's like we take a crowbar and we like crack the door open a little bit uh -huh. and then we have to throw as much as we can to get people through the door mm -hmm. to another side as opposed to just standing in the doorway enjoying the fresh air until yeah. it closes again. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that interesting? I, I love that and it's such a good idea and I think it's just, you know, so often what drugs can be good for is to just get you to a point. You're like, I got to get to this point otherwise yeah. it's not happening. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. in my first session. We do pre ketamine sessions with everybody where we're getting together and talking about expectations, preparing to work together therapeutically. Um, and one of the things I always ask people is so, what are the things you've been wanting to do that you mm -hmm. haven't been able to, that you know would be good for your health and wellness? And what are those things that you're going to do when we get a little traction? Like, mm -hmm. if that traction comes, when you see that opening, what are we going to do? And people's answers, like, they know already what they're, they need. It's yeah. often things like meditation. I'd start moving my body more. Mm -hmm. I would get out and connect with friends more. Mm -hmm. I would do things that stimulate my mind and get away from the TV. I would mm -hmm. finally get my sleep regulated. Sleep, can't talk enough about how good sleep. Yeah. And important sleep I know. is. I know. You know, I will finally get on the protocol for my gut that I've been wanting mm -hmm. to get on. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the things that I work with people throughout the process. Which oh, I don't think we ever talked about our protocol. That's what I was just going to say. What <laughs> that I was thinking about about that a little while ago, and then it just totally went away. Yeah, what does it look like to yeah. work with you? Work with the group? Sure. So I mean, it can look different places. There's different ways to administer ketamine. We do what is a hundred percent bioavailable which is doing intravenous ketamine mm -hmm. so we have um, a medical staff person either a nurse or paramedic on staff that's working with me collaboratively to support um, and we do six sessions spaced over three weeks two sessions a week or something close to that there hasn't been perfect research yet we're still in new uh, on what exactly the perfect pro um, protocol is but for us this really seems to work. Our founder has been doing this for years and years, and there is some research showing that this is an ideal protocol, okay. where you get that interruption, mm -hmm. then it slides back, <laughs> and then we interrupt again, and then it slides back, mm -hmm. and we try to do that to kind of shock the system into some lasting change. Okay. Other ketamine clinics, and it is a somewhat standard protocol, will then do boosters. We like mm -hmm. to think of it more as a catalyst and use these integrative Mm -hmm. um, techniques to then take people forward so they're not needing to come in and do ketamine once a month. Right. Um, but we do sometimes see that people need boosters. In between those sessions and at the beginning and end, we do what we call integration work. And that's something that's used in any psychedelic, which is you're having weird experiences. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked much about how weird ketamine is, but it's really <laughs> weird. <laughs> <laughs> and they're having yeah, mystical experiences. They're mm -hmm. having experiences of remembering trauma, of really dealing with emotions they've been running from. So in addition to doing psychotherapy in the room during the sessions, we're also meeting between sessions and after mm -hmm. for as long as we need to to make sure that that's getting integrated, that we're using this moment where talk therapy is the most effective it's going to be mm -hmm. to get some real therapeutic process. Yeah. So you do an infusion once a month. We, we, no, we yeah. do an infusion twice a week for three weeks. We do six oh. infusions. Okay. We like throw it all, and yeah. some people would then do follow-ups for a month. We do not do maintenance ketamine. Okay. I mean, we will, some people, if they need to come back in for a booster for some reasons, mm -hmm. we definitely provide that. Sure. But we really have the vision of this is a catalyst. We're going to do this big experience, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a big investment in mm -hmm. time, money, emotional energy. Mm -hmm 
time off work, whatever it is, yeah. but coming in, giving yourself the best shot mm -hmm. possible yeah. um, is doing that s those six sessions and then in between them and following doing these integration sessions. Okay. So when somebody's finished, what are you seeing with you, um, with your services? Like when somebody's finished with their ketamine, what mm -hmm. am I seeing? Yeah. So many, it's like really different things, but um, I mean, with some people, Gosh, I always want to like set expectations lower, but then I also want to talk about how great it is. Yeah. So I mean, I had somebody recently see complete rem complete remission of all symptoms. Somebody wow. who had been suffering with depression daily for 30 years, who oh then gosh. said that they had energy, focus, um, motivation, um, you know, interest in doing things again, mm -hmm. pleasure. That is an atypical response. Okay. But we do see some of those. Mm -hmm. We see other people, you know, the thing I'd say people say the most is I'm feeling lighter. Um, oh, that's nice. I'm yeah. feeling lighter, like things are not bothering me as much. I'm feeling more regulated, um, seeing a little more energy, mm -hmm. a little more engagement, um, a little more curiosity and openness. Mm -hmm. Um, or people saying like, I just saw a ton of therapeutic benefit where I just, things are making more sense. Mm -hmm. I'm having a lot more um, trust that things will be okay, um, more connection to my spiritual life. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really running the gambit from like, I'm seeing, and I think everyone who comes in wants to see that I've been put into full remission yeah. for my depression. Mm -hmm. That is going to be, you know, probably under 20%. Okay. But then you've got that, you know, 50 to 60% who are seeing benefits, like mm -hmm. feeling lighter, like feeling more mm -hmm. engaged, like mm -hmm. I really am starting to do my exercise, and then they're slowly over time kind of getting back to mm -hmm. to life. To life. Mm -hmm. Or other people saying I'm feeling good enough to titrate off my medication and then getting support doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you're doing um, the ketamine therapy, or so typically they'll stay on their meds so you can do, you'll do them at the same time? It's, they do it differently. So okay. if, if somebody's goal is to be titrating off mm -hmm. their medication, um, I've seen our psychiatrist recommend you know doing it while on the okay. ketamine treatments because the ketamine is so supportive. Mm -hmm. It can help. Yeah. Like there's usually kind of this desert a person has to walk through when they're getting off mm -hmm. their medication where they're gonna get much worse. Mm -hmm. And so some people will be doing it that way. Sometimes people will be waiting till the end um, some medications don't mix well with the ketamine, so okay. some things are yeah. being titrated off before. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's just something that's like being worked out with the medical team. It's amazing. It's amazing. I just think it's super cool, yeah. and I'm so glad that you came in. Is there anything else that you want to say um, that maybe we haven't hit on yet? I think we've hit on all of it, and I think what's important is like this is a catalyst. This yeah. is like something to come do when you're ready to do all the other things. Like mm -hmm. if you're considering ketamine therapy, it's like a moment to say, yeah, I'm willing to throw my effort, my money, my like social capital, like all at this moment mm -hmm. um, for healing. I'm gonna come in and do a ketamine series. I'm gonna do all the psychotherapy I need to do. I'm gonna like work on my nutrition, like sort of that moment when you're like, yeah, this is my, it's just these 10 seconds in the rest of your life, yeah. like sports yeah. movie moment. Mm -hmm. um, and if not, if it's just like, I just want to come in and get some ketamine and maybe feel a little better, like that's okay. And if mm -hmm. you're really depressed, yeah, mm -hmm. it might buy you six to you know 10 weeks of feeling good. Interesting. And that can yeah. be yeah. enough for somebody yeah. if mm -hmm. that, you know, when things are really low. Mm -hmm. But I'd say coming in with an attitude of readiness and some realistic expectations that yeah. We're not promising you a rose garden, but things can get different. Mm -hmm. So cool. Yeah. Okay, and there you have it. Ketamine's cool. <laughs> Ketamine is cool, Ketamine's and cool. don't do it on your own. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> that, I think that sounds like a really bad Ketamine idea. Ketamine in clinical settings is cool. <laughs> Ketamine in someone's basement is not cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're not promoting <laughs> doing drugs in somebody's basement. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so tell us um, where you can be found. Um, oh, okay, so we can be found um, integrative psychiatry centers dot com. Um, integrative psychiatry centers of Boulder. We've got a website. Um, we just moved to a new clinic in Niwot that is incredible. My office is actually an old recording studio, so it's soundproof, so we oh, can yell and nice. cry and scream and. 
Niwat's um, in Colorado, by the way, for oh. those who have no idea what Niwat is. <laughs> yeah, just outside of Boulder. Um, <laughs> and we have a big group yoga room, resting room, so the clinic is fantastic. Um, so you can reach out and call anytime, and we've got um, people who can talk to you about um, treatment. You can also always um, reach out to me directly. My email is sarah, S-A-R-A-H, at um, psychiatrycenters.com. And I'm happy to talk to anybody about whether ketamine could be a good fit. Yeah, um, I have one of my clients who uh, who w- just randomly she we started talking about this stuff. She's like, I really want to try ketamine therapy. I'm like, Oh, well, <laughs> I know someone you can talk to. <laughs> oh yeah, we had a great conversation. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, it is. I think it's super interesting. I hope that you all have learned a ton because I have, and I just think that when we you know, open our minds to, to what what can be. I just think it, it really is an amazing thing. Um, yeah. So good stuff. So uh, I am Nikki Burnett. So functional nutritionist, website, tastelifenutrition.com. All the social media is Taste Life Nutrition. Go to my website. You can fill out a free assessment. Um, and I take a look at that personally and I reach out personally and see if there are things that, you know, we can talk about or things that we can work on um, and that's about it. So, uh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah, love to talk. I mean, could talk for four more hours about all the therapy part, but excited to get a little yeah. overview in. Yeah, this is good stuff. So, um, we will see you in two weeks. Have an amazing Memorial Day. Go hug a soldier, and mm-hmm. uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>